After decades of dictatorship, Myanmar is opening to the world. Once a backwater, places like Inlay Lake are now on the bucket list for hundreds of thousands of tourists every year. Inlay Lake is one of the treasures of Myanmar. For generations, the Inta people have lived and fished and even farmed on these waters. There are vegetable gardens floating all around us here and that's where they grow tomatoes, garlic, onions, everything they need for their daily life. There is a tourism boom underway and things are changing, but for now there is a semblance of traditional life. This is the Myanmar that the government wants foreign visitors to see. But not far away, just over these mountains in southern Shan State, lies another world where tourists are definitely not welcome. This is opium country. Tucked away near the notorious Golden Triangle, almost 600 square kilometres carpeted by poppies. Myanmar, better known to many people as Burma, is now the world's second biggest producer of opium after Afghanistan. Most of the heroin on the streets of Australia comes from here. We've come to the source of that heroin to meet the people who depend on the poppy those who grow it and those who use it, and will journey to a remote village where some are trying to change. For workers like Nam Kam Sre, poppies are simply a valuable crop. Nung has never tried opium and has only the vaguest idea of what happens to the cans of sticky sap once the trader collects them from her village. The United Nations estimates around 200,000 households are involved in poppy cultivation across Myanmar. The harvest has more than doubled in the last decade. ไล่ฮึดฮูถึงไอ้ก่อนค่ะก็ก็ทําใจอยู่ค่ะนะเลสอย่างมันก็ให้คนคนกินก็มีนะเนาะมันเนาะมันเนาะเป็นเพศตะ
opium is fueling conflict, but conflict is also fueling opium production. So in that sense, it's, it's right there, it's at the core. The local farmers are not getting rich on this opium production, not at all. This is a way to survive. Of course, the higher you get in the ranks, the more money that get into it. So if you are transporting the drugs at a higher level, you might get some more. If you're talking about the top, for sure it's organized crime. Once the opium is harvested, the traders collect the product from the farm gate, sometimes in exchange for pre-ordered goods. It's the Shan State equivalent of online shopping. The opium is carried down from the mountains by traders, trucks and literally by drug mules. Closer to the border, it's turned into heroin and smuggled through China, Thailand and onto the global market, including Australia. We're talking about tons and tons of heroin. And unfortunately for Australia, that heroin is, is on a large scale going to Australia. It's not coming from Afghanistan. So I think most Australians would probably think it's coming from Afghanistan, but, but it's not true. It's actually from, from Myanmar. As much as 80% of Australia's heroin comes from here, but most of the crop doesn't make it that far. It ends up in China, which has by far the largest number of heroin users in Asia. We're heading to northern Shan State, following the busy trading route that carries Myanmar's timber, gold, gemstones and opium to the outside world. This narrow mountain road was once a key supply route for Allied forces in World War II. Thousands of mostly Chinese labourers died building it. These days, the victims are usually the trucks. A misjudged turn can be fatal, though more often it means a long traffic jam. In our case, 22 hours. At long, long last, we move again. The traffic event has been the talk of Myanmar. After two nights stuck in the van, the conversation has lost its way. Love you, man. <laughs> At the end of the road is the bustling border town of Musei. It's Myanmar's busiest border crossing to China, Trade both ways is approaching $5 billion this year. The locals all want a piece of the action. The border between Myanmar and China, you can see through the gate just a glimpse of the prosperity beyond. And the people on this side, the Myanmar side, are lining up to get day visas, if they're lucky, a week visa, so they can go over to China and work and make some money. But not all Myanmar's opium leaves the country. Locally, the supply is cheap and all too abundant, as we discover just a short distance away. Like so many small towns here in northern Shan and bordering Kachin state, Nantpakar is in the grip of an epidemic. It's isolated, there are very few jobs, and it's flooded with pure heroin. 68-year-old Dor Lee has buried two of her sons.
I understand you have three sons, and one of them is still alive, still with us. Can you tell me about his situation? ตุ๊จ๋าเลยอสาอิงกะเนตุ๊งซวยปิมาတော့ถั่วตั๋วเดอืมจุมาเลยตรุตุ๊อกูดิลุมยาฉิมะลาซุรอสิกเทมาတော
The Shan people are Myanmar's largest minority. For centuries they have occupied the Shan Plateau that descends from the mountains of western China. Like many of Myanmar's minorities, they suffered under the Burmese military. They have few economic prospects other than opium production. We're on the way to meet a determined group of villagers who've decided to try something new. And if it works, there's hope it could bring change to the entire region. It's only been in the last few years that the United Nations has had access to this part of Shan State, which is where the bulk of Myanmar's opium has grown. It's an extremely mountainous, rugged area. The roads, as you can probably tell, are pretty wild and not for the faint-hearted. In the wet season, they're impassable in many places. But at this time of year, it's okay, we can get through. The poppies are in full bloom and the harvest is underway. Until recently, this area was the front line. For more than 60 years, the Shan State Army and other insurgent groups fought the Burmese military for an independent homeland. The conflict claimed thousands of lives and forced many people into makeshift camps. To the north, the fighting continues. But here, a ceasefire means it's mostly calm for now. But no one really knows how long it will last. Hello. As we make our way along the dirt track, our convoy encounters a Shan State Army roadblock. Nice to meet you. They're not about to admit to a foreign film crew that they have anything to do with the opium crop. อ่าลองไปมองมีแต่เนื้อมุกตัวมาขาดได้อ่ามีหันออนลองเกี่ยวข้องยาเนี่ยอันที่ว่าเขาเปลี่ยนปังตึกกันแล้วก็ที่เล
mok sau pi nay cái quá mok sau pi nay ơn nó sau pi nay á mok sau pi mà nay cái cả thay kim com đi thay hết com đi lu pen kim com đi lu hao kim com đi phụ hao kim com đi phụ pen kim com đi để cần thiết phát bướng này này hao kha nay mi năm dài thay hết tạ cả mượn chân nặng nay hơn hao kha đây mưa liều nay like many Shan men, Panu's son left for Thailand to find employment. She hopes that one day she'll sell enough coffee to bring him home. Oh, <laughs> Hope is running high right across Myanmar after the historic election that saw the end of military rule. The new democratically elected government must bring stability to a nation where few remember peace. Some just aren't prepared to wait. In northern Myanmar, anti-drug vigilantes have begun destroying poppy fields and banishing drug dealers, fighting back against a trade that has ruined thousands of lives. Many here want change. ไม่เพียดปูส่วนแลเพียดเตเนียจ้ะเราเพียดเตไม่เพียดปูเตเนียส่วนแลเปลี่ยนเพียดเตเนียดิแลอะหมาจีสิดาบ่ทําไมจม